This is some new firmware I wrote for uh, Zach Scholl's Pico Core. I call this uh, Pico 33. It's kind of a, a little bit, kind of a takeoff on the, the PO 33 sampler. Um, this is a very simple sample player, it's a sample sequencer. Uh, when I f first saw the um, Pico Core, I thought it would be really cool to turn that thing into a little tiny groove box. So this is my attempt to do that. So you can buy the Pico Core hardware from Zach on his website. He sells uh, the complete uh, unit, he sells it as a kit, or you can buy a bare board. Um, as you can see, this one is homemade. I had all the parts and it was the fastest way to get one was to just build it. So that's what I did. Uh, the board on here, it's a, uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, RP2040 processor. This particular board, I bought mine on AliExpress. Um, it has 60 megs of flash, which gives you lots of flash for uh, storing samples. And also has this little user button, which I'm using in the user interface. So what the Pico 33 is, it's basically a, uh, eight tracks of 16 steps. And we can uh, set it up to play um, whatever samples we want. It can be drum samples, it can be um, synth samples, can be chords, whatever the heck you want. Uh, I'll sh I showed another video how to load uh, custom samples onto it. It's not terribly difficult. The whole thing is written in Arduino, uh, Pico Arduino, and it's using 16-bit um, PWM audio out, which I think sounds pretty good for PWM audio. So let's take a look at this thing and see how it works. So again, we have eight sequencers and to select a sequencer you press actually you press the user button and press the track one of these eight track buttons here so you can see we get a, a fast flash that's to remind us the track we're on so as we change tracks you see that little fast flash and anytime we press the user button we'll see that little flash and that helps remind you which track you're working on so as you can see here the leds are cycling through <clears throat> and it looks kind of weird because they're only cycling through um, kind of half the steps because it's only showing you the first half of the 16 step sequencer so to see the second half of the 16 step sequencer we tap the user button the blue light comes on which indicates we're looking at the second 16 steps of the sequencer tap it again it goes back to first so to enable a step we tap the button. So now we've got a sample playing. Now we've got four samples playing. So let's change that sample. Let's go to, um, I think I've got a TB303 sample in here. So so you've got one, st one step playing. This is the first step. If you go to the second, there's no steps playing in the second half. So let's let's enable some steps on the second half. Now if we want to edit a step, let's edit this step. We just press and hold, and then we can use these three pods to edit the step. So first one is edit the pitch. So pitch is fully clockwise is down one octave, or fully counterclockwise. Fully clock, clockwise is up one octave, and roughly in the middle is no pitch change, and it's quantized into chromatic steps. So if you play around, you can get anything you want within plus or minus one octave. This knob is used for velocity or, or loudness. So we can turn it off completely. Maybe give it more emphasis by turning it up. And this one is used for probability. So this allows us to put some variation in the sequence. So if I turn the probability to zero, it 
it's off. And halfway is 50%. And it'll, you'll hear it sort of, sometimes it sounds, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I've got a little bass line going on uh, the first track. So let's put some rhythm on the second track. Let's find out, uh, maybe a bass sound. So we change samples by holding the user button and tweaking this pot. Okay, that'll work. So yeah, accidentally change tracks there. You gotta be very careful with that. When you're holding the user button, this to select tracks, if you wanna enable steps, you gotta keep your finger off the user button. Um, so the other couple of things you would want to know is uh, if you want to change the BPM, we hold the user button and adjust BPM. And it displays BPM exactly the way the Pico Core does. It's in binary, offset by 50. There's a one kind of double button combination we can use to mute tracks. So we hold this button, track zero button, this is what I call track zero, and hold this one, it'll mute. And if you click it again, it will enable. So you can, as you're working on tracks, if you want to mute all the others or mute one, whatever, when you're playing. So the other thing that's built into this is uh, clock dividers. So we can run the sequencers at different clock rates. So by default, uh, it's set up for, you can see on the LEDs here, if we turn this pot, change the clock divider. So right now that's standard clock, so that's basically 1 16th note. So 16 beats in the sequencer. So consider that example, uh, just call out one bar. So it's going to be 16 notes. The whole sequencer will, will rotate through in one bar. So if we do, if we go this one, it becomes 30 second notes. So it's going to do 16 notes, but now it's half a bar because it's clocking twice as fast. So now if we go to the right, it's, now it's eighth notes, now it's quarter notes. Now it's clocking at half note rates. Now it's clocking once per bar. Now it's clocking every two bars. Now it's clocking every four bars. So we'll put it back to 16th. So what this is useful for is it's for getting um, rhythmic variation. So you can have the sequencers running at multiple, you know, different clock rates relative to each other, which creates more rhythmic variation. And the other thing it's quite handy for is if you slow it down to say um, one bar or two bars or four bars even, and you put a chord sample in here, you can play chords. So you can have your rhythm and chords going and you can change the chords by changing the pitch. It's, uh, it's kind of cool to get going. So this example of sequencing chords, we have a little bass arp going there, some uh, rhythm yeah. stuff, and some random vocals. Yeah. So this one is uh, a little more randomness in it. You can hear the bass line is changing. And we have some vocal samples. So that's the Pico 33. So pick yourself up the hardware from Zach. Uh, the code is on my GitHub. I will leave uh, a binary with this sample set in the build subdirectory. So this sample set has some uh, 303 samples, just a bass sample, some bass drums, a couple of vocals, a whole bunch of little percussion things and stuff. It's a fun set. 
what's real fun in this thing is building your own sample sets, putting your own stuff on there, and you can really have a lot of fun with it. And again, check the other video on Pico Beats uh, for how to load your own samples with using the Arduino IDE. So have fun with it.